hope. Good afternoon, yeah. and thank you very much, Emily, particularly, and Florian, for this uh, invitation to this very important webinar. So I have no relevant conflicts of interest, but I am a member of an organization called Women for Oncology in Greece, which is starting to be increasingly more active. So in Europe, as far as I could find, the first women were admitted to university in Salerno in, 1900, in 900 uh, AD, but the first woman who made it to medical school in Athens was in 1897. And she was somebody who came actually from the same island as my origin is from, by coincidence. And uh, when she was going to class, they would yell at her and her sister, they had both enrolled actually, uh, telling them to go back to their kitchen. But they persisted and they finished medical school and uh, one of them went to Austria to become a pediatrician, the other one went to Egypt and became a microbiologist and finally came back 40 years later to become the first woman professor in medical school. Now, when I went into medicine, which was quite a bit later than that, things were much better. There were many more women physicians, or no, although not that many. And the advice I had from my father, who was also a physician, was to ignore the fact that I was a woman, that it, to, to just not, not factor it in in anything and hope that the society would also follow along with that. Um, right now, and I know this is all Greek to you, but what I have circled here is the percentage of women in medicine enrolling to universities in Greece. And in, in medicine, there's 55% of women, over 45% of men in the new enrollees. And in dentistry, 60% women and 40% men. This is in contrast to this graph that shows you uh, the faculty in the university, whereby, and this goes all the way up to 2016, women are here uh, in red and men are in green. And as you see that despite more and more women going into medical school, the faculty remains increasingly so mostly male. There is no formal specialty of neuro-oncology in Greece. There's very few of us that uh, work in this field. Um, but there's 171 medical oncologists in, a, in, a, in 381 overall, so about 45%. 35% of uh, neurologists are women, and very few are neurosurgeons. And most of them are trainees. Now, from here on, I'm going to show you some data from the states that I believe also empirically seem to be the same in Greece, um, although this has never been studied as such in my country. Now, in this very interesting report from Medscape in 2019, women seem to be less satisfied than men in, in their work but they do derive whatever satisfaction from the gratitude of patients and knowing that they're making the world a better place. And their main frustration is the long hours and dealing with difficult patients compared to men who are more frustrated by many rules and regulations. Most women would choose medical oncology in 83% and neurology in 85% again, if they were to choose another another time to, to repeat their choice of medical specialty. And 80% of oncologists would choose to become physicians again, and 73% of neurologists would choose to become physicians again, 75, sorry. So a, a large majority of, uh, of people would go back into the same field. What about about how we, how, what do we have to bring as women to medicine? So women, first of all, at least in this study, seem to spend more time with patients than men, significantly more time. These are minutes. So more women spend 17 to 24 minutes with patients at, at each visit compared to men. And many more women spend 25 minutes or more. And never mind how much time we spend, we seem to be delivering better care because in this study from JAMA, in comparison to men, women seem to 
uh, have lower readmission and lower mortality rates in the US. And these differences, both for 30-day readmission here and third, uh, sorry, 30-day uh, mortality and 30-day readmission rates are statistically significantly better from female physicians compared to male. So we seem to be delivering better care, but as was also mentioned in last year's meeting where uh, Emily spoke and, uh, and Dr. Chan from the US, it, women make less money for the same effort or more effort make less money than men in the US at least. And this is not just because they're spending more time, so they're seeing fewer patients, but even if you take it per minute, they still make less money per minute than they do, than men do. Now, what about academia? What about the academic work that uh, women do? So in terms of collaborative cancer clinical trials, it seems that over time, things are getting better. More and more women are, uh, participating um, in clinical trials as lead investigators. However, if a clinical trial is industry funded, it is less likely that it will be led by a woman. And Europe is, if anything, worse than the United States in terms of women leading um, clinical trials. And in terms of being speakers at medical conferences, at least in the US and Canada, things have been getting better over time. So 26% of speakers in conferences in 2007 became 32% in 2015, being women. And in medical specialties was a bit higher and surgical was lower. And this is despite the fact that with time, and this is time that you see here, there's more and more women in medicine, but still men are more speakers, more frequently the speakers in medical conferences than women, at least in the North, Northern Americas. And this is the change over time in the same analysis. Now, what about holding leadership positions in academia? You, you, you heard uh, the previous speaker, you heard Navidad describe what it's like to be in academia, and that's not very good, it seems. So this is specifically for oncologic specialties, medical, radiation, and surgical oncology. And the difference between the chairperson and the program director being a man or a woman is really quite dramatic. And this is a very recent study. So many more chairs of departments are men than women. And you see here that if a woman is a director or has been a director of a department at any point in that department, then it's more likely that there will be women in the faculty than if there's never been a female director for the department. And this difference in medical and radiation oncology is statistically significant. So it seems that women are more likely to hire women than men are. Now, what about uh, being appointed to higher ranks in as full professor, etc. Well, what you see in these graphs from this study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine just in 2020 is that despite more and more women going into medicine, there is still more men being advanced, promoted to associate and full professor and department chair. And here, what you see in this graph in the, on the right is that the, the differences between men and women, blue being men and red being women, are the same whether you're talking about the groups 1979 to 97 or 97, 97 to now. So this is not getting much better over time. And even more clear, you can see it here. And it's interesting that even though at the assistant professor level, over time, there's more women. The red line is women. Associate and full professors continue to be more frequently men than women. And this is in neurology now, going to the other very significant field in neuro-oncology. And you see here that there is definitely, uh, in terms of associate professors, many more men than women um 
independent of whether there's been many years from graduation, even though women have been going to medical school more recently, still they're old enough to have been professors and have not been promoted as much as men, at least in the United States. And one last graph from another part of the world, because we're not just Europe and the US. Um, this is from Japan. This is also a, a recent report from JAMA. And uh, also you see that in Japan, women are making it very well to assist a professor, but don't do very well about going beyond that to associate and full professor. So all in all, I'd like to conclude by saying that in Greece, uh, at least, there's increasingly more women in the healthcare workforce. However, they're still much, uh, they rise much slower than men through the ranks of academia, and they still carry the burden of the household to a great extent in Greece. And it seems that internationally, women are at least as effective, if not better, in caring for patients, but earn less, have different frustrations, academically rise slower through ranks and hold fewer leadership positions despite increasing participation in randomized clinical trials and publications. Thank you very much.